to Danilo to the channel where I talk about the same stuff that I do on my main channel, but everything's just worse. Um, and today I'm talking about the iPhone 13 mini, which is a phone that I just bought. I don't really care about phones, but I do care about cameras. And here's the thing, phones have cameras. The previous phone that I owned, own, I still have it, is an iPhone 8. I thought it was cool at the time. I got it straight after having an iPhone 5C and it was quite an upgrade, but you know, four years have passed. Anyways, so as you know, I'm a photographer, filmmaker, person. As Chase Jarvis famously said, the best camera is the one that you have with you. And more often than not, the camera that I have with me is my phone. So I'm going to test out my phone camera because I like to know the capabilities of the cameras that I own. And I thought I'd make a video about it for anyone who wants an iPhone 13 mini or is just curious about an iPhone 13 mini. <laughs> Now let's be realistic here. I'm talking about the iPhone 13 and this is most definitely not the first video that you've watched about this phone. It's very popular and you probably know all the features. So I'm not gonna describe what the features are. I'm just gonna go through my opinions that I've written here in my book, which begins with cinematic mode, of course which is one of the headline features of this phone. And I have to say, it's very impressive, but it's also very disappointing. It's not for a professional. This footage at the moment is not supported by Mac OS. And that's really annoying. The quickest way to get the footage from my phone to Final Cut Pro is to airdrop it onto my Mac and then get it from there. And for me and my workflow, that's a little bit annoying because all of my footage on my phone is backed up to iCloud and synced with photos on my Mac anyways. As I record this, it's the middle of October in 2021 and I can't open this footage and I can't change the focus of this footage on my Mac. I'm pretty sure they're gonna fix this problem when Mac OS Monterey comes out and with a future update of Final Cut Pro. But for now, that's the case. The other sticky thing with cinematic mode is that it's capped to 1080p and 30 frames a second. I'm not particularly bothered that I have to shoot in 1080 because that's what I shoot all my normal videos in. But the 30 frames per second kind of sucks because editing with different frame rates just doesn't work that well. And whenever I use my phone for my other videos, uh, I, it's got to match. And that basically means I just can't shoot those things in cinematic mode. Cinematic mode is really cool. It's just professionals need frame rates. But if you're not a professional, that doesn't matter. This is something Apple could change with software. Hopefully it'll eventually be in 25 frames a second. So yeah. Uh, cinematic mode overall, it's got potential, but from there, we're gonna move on to HDR. This phone is technically my first camera that shoots HDR. It's interesting to edit with. I'm not gonna keep using it after making this video because it takes up more data and I shoot everything in SDR. So matching in the edit is a bit of a pain. The other thing that annoys me with the HDR on the phone is that slow motion isn't in HDR. So if you're matching slow motion footage with standard footage on your phone, you're gonna have a few issues. And speaking of slow motion, I shot a little bit of footage with my cousin when he came to visit, just kicking around a soccer ball. And the slow motion, every year it gets more and more impressive. Slow motion's always gonna be worse than the standard shooting, but it's getting better and it's getting closer. I still rarely need to shoot in slow motion, but it's nice to have. Anyways, that concludes the video section of this video. And now I'm gonna move on to the photo part. What you just saw there were my 15 favorite images that I've captured with this phone over the past little while. And something that I noticed whilst choosing these pictures was that the majority of them were taken with the wide standard lens. I, I didn't expect it because I really enjoyed the ultra wide and the ultra wide is quite 
impressive. It's comparable to the main lens, but it's still just that little bit worse quality wise, especially around the edges. Other than the ecosystem that I'm in because I have a Mac and use Final Cut Pro, the reason I get a new iPhone over an old iPhone is for the cameras and for the photography because I, I said this at the start of the video, but the best camera is truly the one that you have with you and having a reasonable camera with you all the time is even better. And wow, they've made leaps and strides. I, I don't have that many thoughts about the photos. And yeah, with that, we're at the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel up here. Make sure to subscribe to my main channel if you wanna see much better videos about similar stuff. There's a video, here's a video. Um, Subscribe, smash notification bell. This channel really needs to get 200 subscribers at one point. So if you could subscribe, that'd be really cool. I'll see you next time.